friends who have been all around the continent and been on holiday in Europe went to see Red Mole in Wanganui, and they said they were absolutely fantastic. And I was really disappointed I couldn't go. And she really knows about theatre, this girl. She's been to London, Europe. They thought it was the best thing that she'd ever seen. didn't seem that that was the sort of life we wanted. So we came, came back to look at it again, and His Majesty was sitting here, this big theater that was used to big spectacles. So many overseas companies had come here and performed here. And then we decided to come from the South Island and run right through the country. And if we hit Auckland on the trot, maybe His Majesty's would come off. So we're sitting here with a $4,000 gamble. One week only in Christchurch, you lucky, fortunate people. A show full of humor and delight for all the family, and especially for those who can keep up with the play. At the Nile Marsh Theatre, three nights only this week. In town for one week only, Red Mall Enterprises. Red Mall is all about a missionary attempt to convert the natives to uh, another way of life. And we're a group of evangelicals uh, who are touring around the nation with the wrath of God in us at the moment, proclaiming the second coming and the vague hope that the second coming might come. Yes, folks, this is an inimitable group of entertainers who've come from far, far away just to entertain you here in Christchurch this week only at Islam's University campus. And right now what we want to do for you is one or two moments from our shows. in Wellington's Evening Post one night, entertainers wanted for store promotion. We answered the advertisement, and it was from James Smith's department store. We got a job during the school holidays in the department store, in the toy department, for which we had to shift bicycles and plastic trolleys out of the way, and Red Mold began there in the toy department of James Smith's. Uh, the group has been formed over a period of years, basically through individuals deciding that the jobs they were doing, or the occupations they had, weren't enough, weren't what they wanted. Each person has come to an individual decision to chuck whatever they were doing and join the group. Um, I guess there just came a time when it became apparent there was a choice, that you didn't have to stick with whatever you were doing at that time that you didn't have to invest your personal insecurities in material securities like jobs or possessions or whatever, that you could go out on the road and live a different kind of life.
I come from Broadwood in the Hokianga, far north. Uh, where do I come from? In a theatrical sense, I come from probably the usual New Zealand tradition, school plays, reviews, um, a few plays in Auckland, and then this feeling that I didn't like conventional theatre, um, probably due to the incredible rise in the states of street theatre at the time. The more physical sorts of theatre, from circus and cabaret, and in New Zealand from theatre action. Well, I don't have a theatrical background really at all. When I joined the group, I had virtually no stage experience whatsoever. I was down this club in Auckland, and this guy came up to me and said, you're, you're a bass player. And I said, yeah. And he said, Reed Molney, the bass player, he said, are you doing anything? At the time, I was, I was sort of temporarily out of work. And uh, so I gave him a number. And the next day, I got a call from Jan Preston. And when it, when it came to me that there was a choice available to me between an academic life and joining this group, I joined the group. Using my own imagination and creating my own characters, rather than having a director or a script direct you into a character and to do it a certain way, I was able to take on any bizarre imaginative element that I wanted to have and was able to work it in entirely on what we were doing. That was the main difference, just a complete freedom. Yeah, I really, um, the more, the more I do with it, the more, I, the more I enjoy it, the more I get into it, because um, I really dig the energy at Red Mole, you know, it's um, more than anything else I've ever been in, you know. The inimitable, the famous, the nationally renowned Red Mole Enterprises will be with you in Christchurch for one week only. to understand higher purchase. <laughs> Listen. So let it be written, so let it be done. According to hitherto four suppressed authorities, there are books in the Vatican Library which prove that the Lord had one eye that was solid silver. The glory. And that he kept appointments with the accuracy of an atomic clock. Hallelujah. At the age of 12, he could solve various psychological disorders with sympathy and discretion. <laughs> yes. You need not worry about me, of course. I'm Anglo-Saxon. Oh, God. I'm not Jewish, no. I only use British gin. It's the best. It's the cheapest. I do it myself out there. It saves you going to Australia. Yeah, I'd rather not have to. No, of course not. Shall I take my boot off or something? Yes, start with the boot. God. I'm hoping.
hoping to get some government finance for my industry. It's, it's time I applied to the Development Finance Corporation. I have some influential friends. <laughs> ha! So let it be written, so let it be done. I have been visited by extraterrestrial creatures <laughs> who have invested me with a divine rock. I have decided to go to Jerusalem, disguised as a Malaysian rubber worker riding on a donkey. <laughs> I guess it's a hard life on the road, but it's, uh, there's always another place you're going to. There is the freedom that we've probably all talked about. There's the feeling that you are your own master, and whatever you wish to do at any particular time, you can do, given that you also accomplish the work that the group has set itself to do. The lifestyle that Red Mole's opted for is, in many ways, I think, sort of a gypsy lifestyle um, without being romantic. I mean, we don't travel around in horses and carts, but we definitely travel. Um, no one's had a fixed abode for any length of time, um, and none of us particularly care. Not uh, that has no shouldn't have any traditional ties with anywhere else, particularly England. So, in terms of our theatre, we're not interested in imports, which a lot of the theatres do now. They import stuff that has no relevance to the New Zealand character, to the landscape, to the humour, or to its history. In fact. It's the place Red Mole was born in. It's the place Red Mole cut its teeth on. And it's the place that Red Mole loves. Context in New Zealand at the moment, for instance, 
it's vitally important that there be people working in any number of media who are truly independent of all institutional structures and therefore able to comment from outside on the prevailing reality on what's going on. From our dreams and fantasies, from around us, from our environment. I mean, if you take a look around, New Zealand's a fairly weird place. It's filled with eccentrics. It's filled with glorious scenery, the lot. And it's something that's really denied, I think, in the, in the New Zealand character. And I think it's our job to explore that whole other eccentric New Zealand. And for that, we, we draw from our own experiences. And we push them, and we fantasize and deal in the surreal. Right. Do the handstand once more. You all right with the back? You all right? Right. Can't do it. Make it look good. Come on. Cheer up, cheer up. Come on, a bit more action. Come on. Don't stand there, because it looks silly. <laughs> you can look anywhere you like. Yep. Right, into it. Up. Red ball enterprises, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's only a no And the Fair Royal. The entire original show, the temporary political satire. Acrobatic, fire eating, puppet, fast, sunset. Right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Great. Right. Terrific. Have you got something, a dollar fifty? Two dollars, you know, two dollars. No, I haven't. haven't. I have I have to give you change. How much do I have to give you? Three. Two fifty. Oh, I don't know. How much is it? Uh, three dollars for two. Three, four, five. I'll let you off lightly. Because yeah. <laughs> I like your face. I which has been gratifying. For instance, last time we played Nelson, yes? One ticket, please. One? Yeah. We played the Old Folks Hall two nights and about uh, 15 people turned up each night. And now we're back in Nelson. And we drew 99 last night and we'll break three figures tonight.
Well, it's the function that it seems to be performing at the moment is um, presenting certain political ideas to people and discussing them in some way or other, or exposing certain political situations. And by political, I mean uh, just human relationships. And uh, one of the ways we want to change people is by making them entertain for a start. And we believe if you can entertain people in their own terms, on their own ground, in their own marketplace, you've changed their heads. up and bouncing them around a little bit it's a, uh, as I said before it's an evangelical process and basically we want to bounce people between the walls and then they might be able to define the images that are at the end of the corridor Masterpiece there. We've been on that for a long, long time. Spectacular. Well, I think Red Mole feels obliged to point out a lot of the time, and this is why much of the work is satirical, that there is a gap between what people think this country is, what people might think is happening in this country, and what the reality is. Because we don't operate from a building in the traditional sense, we've had to become very versatile so that we can accept any jobs that come up that one week we could perform for school, school children uh, with, with puppets and clowns and masks. The next week we could be out at the Easter show um, performing to thousands of family groups, light end. The next week we could be in prisons performing or in hospitals, uh, that we could be on the street. Well, here he is, folks. Harold makes me one of the great unemployed. What are we going to do with Harold? Well, half the unemployed are cutting down native trees, so the other half can plant pine trees. And now it's your turn, Harold. Chop a tree! I saw you down and out in Pilot Lake. Chop down trees, forget all that stuff about the bad 
we're on our way up to Auckland. Are you? Doing a show up there. Oh, very nice. At His Majesty's. Oh, yes. His Majesty seats 1,300 people and we've got 15 bookings so far, so we're a bit tense at the moment. 15 bookings and you've got... 1,300 seats to fill. Oh, heavens. I'll have to make a special trip up there then. Would you come up? <laughs> stage is the big, the big finish, the big finale, Auckland, uh, in His Majesty's, which uh, makes sense, because it's kind of, a, to play a theatre like that, it's kind of a logical conclusion after playing all these little halls and small towns and stuff. And it's a brilliant theatre, and the Auckland audience will love this sort of show, it's just for them, I think. I was hoping to have a mirror ball in the center of it with about 4K of light on it, which would reflect out in the audience, but I don't think we're going to be able to get one if we had had a chance to. There's one up at the Ace of Clubs. Do you know uh, Phil Warren? Yeah, yeah, we worked there. Uh, do you think you could borrow it? It's about that big. Well, that's fantastic. Is it? are about 400 for a night. We've still got things to rehearse. You know, we've done, we've done all we can do, really. Well, I mean, it's been good advertising. We've got a good theatre, got a good band. Um, unless people get along, things don't look so good. I'm hoping that it'll be a brilliant success and it'll be a grand finale to the tour in New Zealand for a while and everything. But um, it's very hard to tell, actually, with bookings because Auckland people tend to leave things to the last minute. Advertising, we, we have a, a poster, Barry Linton, our poster artist, did one for going to Djibouti, which has followed us around for a while. And this poster has become well established. Also this year he created a logo for us for Red Mole, so that we've, we're developing as a commercial enterprise a corporate identity. It's like selling cornflakes. That's where to go, right? Come to His Majesty's. His Majesty's, all right? And I can see you there. Yeah, you certainly oh, can. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> I think the problem is always with Red Mole with regards to this show is that having done a, a very good run for two months with going to Djibouti in the South Island and in Wellington, that we arrived back in Auckland full of new ideas, more ideas than we had time to cope with and rehearse, right? So um, we're all right now so, still sewing new costumes, still dreaming up new lines, uh, sitting up incredibly late at night and working out new acts. Um, Jan's writing new music, Deb and I are doing a new dance. Um, 
There's just uh, the usual chaos that we always have on an opening night. Ha. And that. We decided just before we did it. All right. Right, the problems I see is they've got twice as much action as that solo is going to be. Next. <laughs> Piss off, Brian. about things, but otherwise energized. How long the curtain time? About 10 minutes. And I'm ready. <laughs> Black waistcoat's quite good. It's quite nice with nothing on underneath, but you might get a bit cold. Yeah, please. Okay. Oh, fine. Great. How do you feel? It's all up to God now. Eh? Um, how long? I haven't heard the latest uh, countdown for work. About ten, about ten minutes before we start, probably. And I've lost my boot. <laughs> Me? Absolutely away. mad. Nutty. Crazy. She's fine. I can speak to Jean. <laughs> I think that Red Mole is so enterprising and uncorny that there should be so many more little Red Moles around in this country that we would be a mass of little burrows and we'd never be able to get out again. Say five, probably ten. Any word on the audience? Yep, moderate. <clears throat> it's second to last reincarnation of Uncle L, <laughs> the kiddie's favourite. Excuse out. The man with the lollies. <clears throat> Can I swap seats? going now. How do I know exactly when to start? Can we come with you? Oh, of course, here. Come out with us. Um, just two seconds. Three minutes. Okay. Oh, that looks good, you ladies. You look neat. Brilliant. shoes for the tango. I'll get them off you at half time. 
I'm going to Djibouti, got to get away. I'm going to Djibouti, got to get away. Finishing that dress rehearsal half an hour before curtain time. What about the audience? Great, tremendous. Well, once the curtain goes up, there's only one thing, and that's the show. And nothing else matters. And you'll do anything. You get into this extraordinary state of mind where you'll do anything to make sure the show will go well. And if you do get to that state, the energy that you've picked up in rehearsal and with your nerves beforehand just goes straight through you and out to the audience. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Hood. I'm an undertaker. <laughs> I heard there was some dying being done up here. There's a lot of people walking around with tombstones in their eyes. Lining up outside the unemployment office. They're all mine. Doing a great I'm going to get ready. Oh, Sit right. you're going to do it. I'll go out. Uncle Al. So, stick right up, take a ride on the ghost train. Take to lacerate the inside of your brain. To God defend New Zealand while it trickles down the drain. The leaders of the nation say the people are the same. Well, hang on, just wait for dead. There are people who still don't know that our democracy is dead. We wrote our own obituary. Better dead than red. What are you going to do? Do you want me to film? Because I'm the feel of the times. And I'm knocking on your gate. I got a question from the church. I got an answer from the state. And I'm looking out for custom. You fit the description. If you're alone and confused 
and unsure of your direction. Just stick right up, take a ride on the ghost train. I undertake to lacerate the inside of your brain. Sing God defend New Zealand while it trickles down the drain. And the leaders of the nation say, we're not to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, folks. It's your funeral after all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good so far. It's fine. <laughs> About the show. Oh, it's quite good, but I saw the same show in Wellington, which I thought was much better. This was in the cabaret, which was a lot more intimate than the show they can put on here. It's the first time I've ever seen them. We arrived late, but I'm really enjoying it. it. Took a bit of a while to get into it. Oh, I don't think it's that good yet. No good. Oh, I've seen better than before, eh? I mean, there's less people now. Uh, oh, I have to wait off. Um, it's really incredible. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. <laughs> the trouble is, it's, uh, it's not the religious thing, it's a bit on the nose, you know, but that's just a personal thing. But the rest of it, you know, really professional and very well done, and, you know, just love to see more of it in New Zealand, you know. Yes, it is I, Fame of Kandala, Lord of the Tangata Fianua, the old midnight rambler. Pastry King of Cheesecake. <laughs> well, the great dynamo in the sky has burned out all bad connections. Lucky I'm here, eh? <laughs> On the road again. Ah, oh, yes, it's just as well. I'm here rooting for you in the corridors of power. I think the community needs this sort of theatre. The community needs to look at itself and discuss itself. And what we do is do initiate the discussion for the community. You know, there's nothing I like more than a bit of action. A secret police file here. A word to the press gallery there. So look out. Little men only go a little way. You know, it doesn't matter if you're alive or if you're dead. Because I'm watching you with eyes in the back of my head. It's, it's a catharsis for the community in a way. Plus, we can entertain people. In the house of news, in the house of lies, and Danny gets his rocks, you can hear him cry. The world's his oyster and the cracks open wide. Gets what he wants till the day he dies, but he can't go home. Tour manager. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been pretty amazing, yeah. A lot of hard work and uh, blood, sweat and tears, as they say in the business. But slow <laughs> They were a bit slow, but they were eager. They wanted to enjoy themselves. Yeah, they were all right. Oh, it's very gratified they gave us an encore. Yeah. The thing we'd rehearsed it specially. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's really good. Oh, it, was, it was reasonable. It'll have to do better tomorrow night. Oh, come on. Don't uh, be more than oh, no, 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 624 tonight. 624? For a, a theatre that holds 1,300. Oh. Marvellous. Would you like it? A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we did 
didn't think First about ourselves. All right. Adequate. We were Second actually half. cold tonight. Yeah. It went better than I thought it was going to do. Oh, yeah, on a real high note. This is the end, you know. A theatre like this, a show like that, a crowd like this, you know, it's just fitting, very fitting. This is simply to say that I think everybody connected with this group thinks this is the most enjoyable way of life they can get. And everyone in the group's really enjoying it and feeling the mission. And it's all uh, riding on this wave. And what could just happen is that we end up in the middle of nowhere, all gazing at this mystic thing in the sky, which was what we once were or could have been. Thank you. 